hoffe. Okay, thank you. This is a meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission of New Canaan, Connecticut in the form of a special meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission's subcommittee on its plan of conservation and development. Today is Wednesday, the 8th of May, 2024. Uh, this is a virtual only uh, meeting. We will start with the uh, with a um, uh, attendance. Commissioner Benton? Here. Here. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Herring? Not here. Commissioner Nielsen? Here. Okay. Commissioner Radman? Here. And uh, Commissioner Turner? Okay. Uh, Commissioner Radman, you will be uh, seated for uh, Commissioner Turner during this meeting. Okay. Four items on the agenda. First item, status update from SLR, the consultants working with us uh, to put together an update of our plan on conservation development. So I will turn it over to SLR, who would like to start. Okay, I'll start. Uh, good evening, everyone, uh, commissioners. It's nice to see you all once again. Um, I'm joined tonight with my colleagues, Julia Fiore and also Taylor Daigle. Um, you know, I'm gonna share my screen now so we can go through a, a brief presentation and then, uh, you know, have open discussion with you uh, for the remaining part of our uh, time slot. Okay, can everybody see that, um, see the screen well? Okay, so um, our agenda tonight with you is to first of all, give you a update of the uh, what we've been all working on with Sarah um, since we last met in late uh, March. Then to take a quick look at the project schedule for May and June uh, to keep you up to date with how things are going and what to be on the lookout for. And then lastly, we're going to end by talking about the, specifically the next steps that are coming up, um, but focusing on the community open house on May 20th, and then as we get into the um, final plan development in uh, June. So we have been very busy with uh, working with Sarah and the town uh, staff and, and other uh, boards and commissions and focusing on the goals, strategies, action, and policies. And when we last met, uh, we had shared with you the goals and strategies uh, for each one of the four theme areas. Uh, you all reviewed them and then forwarded us uh, comments and suggestions and ideas, and we incorporated them. We reviewed that in more detail with Sarah, and then we sent uh, out, or I believe Sarah sent out a final version of those um, goals and strategies, or at least final uh, draft version of those goals and strategies. We then, uh, uh, with the help of Sarah, organized uh, what we call roundtable meetings, where we ended up taking those goals and strategies and talked with town staff, commission representatives, and other important stakeholders to start to identify linkages between um, in uh, initiatives, uh, projects, needs, um, uh, ideals that those individuals from the different town staff and commissions and other stakeholders had that could that they wanted to forward to us as well as then to you and the public for consideration for actual final actions and policies for the plan. Uh, we also then have had active work sessions with our subject matter experts um, after we talked, uh, got the linkages and ideas from town staff and commission representatives. We then uh, explored ideas with our subject matter experts to kind of get some ideas on the table for us all to consider. Um, and then lastly, what we're working on right now um, very closely with Sarah is that we're synthesizing all the information that we gathered in April through the roundtable meetings and the subject matter expert discussions to kind of craft draft actions and policies um, for consideration by not only you, but then also then the public at the um, public event that's coming up on May 20th, as well as um, in the months um, after that, as we fine tune everything. Just a real quick update. I shared this last time, but just as a quick reminder, 
Um, I wanted to just remind everybody, you know, what we're what we're targeting here for this detailed part of the plan, and that is, you know, what is a goal, a strategy, and, a, and an action. Um, a goal is a broad statement to support the theme area, and as you know, we have several goals for each one of the themes. Which in each goal, there's also a handful of strategies that are more specific subjects that support the goal. And then finally, under each strategy, there's action steps or policies um, that support that particular strategy. Uh, right now, we have been crafting both actions, which have like a very specific task that would potentially be undertaken by town staff or by the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, or a policy that's very specific that kind of gives some guidance uh, to the direction that the town or the Planning and Zoning Commission would like to take on that particular subject. As I had mentioned uh, previously, but just as again, a quick reminder, a specific goal would be something like encourage downtown vibrancy. And then a potential strategy under that goal would be support business retention and growth within downtown. And then an action under that particular strategy would be work with the Chamber of Commerce to develop a business incubator program to support development of local businesses in downtown. Now, the actions, which are in, uh, again, either a specific action step or a policy will then be moved into the implementation plan, which will be an appendix uh, at, the, at the end of the, um, of the plan that will actually show um, you know, who is the action entity that will be leading that, who are supporting entities, um, and then what is the time frame for that particular action? Is it ongoing? Is it um, short term, like within the next year or two, or is it medium term or long term? Um, and we obviously will be fine tuning that with you once the action steps and policies are finalized. So turning attention to the project schedule, specifically for May and June, we wanted to zero in on, um, and I'm not sure, is that is that in the way? <clears throat> um, so right now we are in late, or uh, we are in early May. So we're right here, right here where this, oops, sorry, right here where this line is. And as I indicated, we were where we were before is that we had shared with you the goals and strategies. You reviewed them, we made edits, and then we took those goals and strategies to the roundtable meetings and these uh, subject matter expert meetings that we had in the month of late uh, April. We then have now turned our attention to uh, uh, crafting actions and policies very specific for consideration by you all as well as the public and that um, our, our drafting of that work is going to be concluded um, by May 17th. Uh, we will share that with you for your consideration and start for your review and then also then uh, that will be those draft um, action steps and ideas will be starting points for the discussions that will happen at the May 20th open house. And I will talk a little bit more about the specifics of the open house and how it will be formatted in a few slides from now. If also, I may interrupt, uh, I pose sure. a question, Mr. Collins, uh, it's Commissioner yeah. Chris. Um, on the roundtable meetings with um, senior elected officials as well as senior civil servants, could you just give a, if you and Ms. Carey, I think Ms. Carey was also involved in some of these meetings, just share your general thoughts and how those conversations went broadly. Sure, I'll start out and then um, uh, thank you. definitely would like uh, for Sarah to join in as well. Um, first of all, I want to thank Sarah very much for organizing them. They were very um, organized. Uh, people came very prepared and we had uh, really good conversations with them. So I major kudos to Sarah and others that maybe assisted her in getting those all set up. Um, I think we were actually quite surprised and pleased by the interest and the eagerness of everyone that came and spoke with us uh, and, and having very uh, aligned ideas and suggestions with some things that we knew we had talked about with you in developing the vision and the uh, goals and strategies and themes. So I think a lot of their discussions are going to be really good uh, action steps to be considered specifically for theme four, which is the one about community facilities um, and infrastructure. But there is other things, especially like with our conversation with Chamber of Commerce and others 
um, for business and downtown. Um, but I, I felt like they were very robust uh, quality conversations. Yeah, Anybody I would. Else um, from my team or Sarah? Sure, I'll just jump in. Um, they went very well. Um, we, I think we had 12 meetings total. We talked to police, fire, first selectmen. Um, we had Tiger, Man, um, Maria, the town engineer, um, Conservation Commission, Utilities Commission, um, Parking, and a few others I think I'm skipping over. But um, everyone was really excited, I think, to have the time to be able to give input on you know, what we're working on. I think we got really good consensus on the goals and strategies that you all had edited back in March and April. Um, I don't think we really received any edits other than some like potential wordsmithing that we could consider. And we did get a lot of good actions and a lot of helpful information to link the goals and strategies to initiatives that these departments and commissions are all are already working on. Yeah, did you mention the grant writer? Um, I just wanted to mention that oh, yeah. because some of the uh, he followed up with us afterwards with a very detailed list of uh, grants. So we we can actually embed some of those very specific grants uh, throughout the uh, plan um, action steps. Yeah. Um, Julia or Taylor, any uh, observations? No, I think we covered it, but all very positive. Great. Okay, um, just before I move this slide, just, you know, also what we had decided uh, la uh, back in late March was that in addition to uh, sharing with you and getting your input and the goals and strategies, we also moved chapter two up into that time frame, and we did receive your comments. And working with Sarah, those edits and adjustments to chapter two are actively uh, being taken, uh, you know, into consideration and updates. And that also that particular chapter should be uh, done as far as in final draft by also by mid-May. So that's uh, actively going on as we speak. So moving into what we're going to be doing related to the draft plan in uh, May and June. Uh, first of all, obviously, we have the workshop, which is coming up on the 20th or the open house, I should say. And that's really going to feed into the information that we receive and um, um, people reviewing the goals and strategies and giving us either some suggestions or concurrence will, will um, you know, uh, give us some possibilities for some possible edits, as well as ideas, further ideas or concurrence on action steps and policies. So that'll feed right into then the continuing development of the rest of the chapters and the draft plan. And then uh, what will be happening is in mid-June, that draft plan will then be ready for review by the subcommittee. Um, and then, so we anticipate that we will have a subcommittee meeting to kind of kick that uh, review off in, in uh, mid-June. Um, and then in the end of June, you all will then be reviewing that draft plan, um, which I will circle back on this in a little bit more detail um, in a few more slides. And then approximately around the beginning of July, we will then in, end up being able to get your edits, put them into the, the plan, and then uh, come together to have a consensus or a substantial completion of the draft plan review with you that would then kick off then the uh, review period that would be happening over the summer. And obviously, uh, as we get to that point, we can talk about then J July, August, and September in more detail, but um, you know that's it still continues to be the goal based on the review and the, the process that we're proceeding through right now. If I may, uh, just to be sure, uh, go back to the prior slide, just to understand the, uh, or go over again, the uh, timeline here to be sure uh, we're all on the same page since um, I personally want to ensure we not only have a terrific plan, but everything is done on time. Uh, and I think you're all on board with that too. So that um, the idea is that the uh, final draft plan would be, let's call it just before the 4th of July holiday. Right. So, you know, round numbers here. And uh, then you can come back. And then uh, once that has been uh, uh, signed off on by the subcommittee, uh, it would then go to the town council for a mandatory review. 
That's correct. Um, you know, and we do have a little bit of wiggle room in here about two weeks, but we're saying we, we are estimating that approximately around July 15th, that's when the 65 day, um, and this could, this could potentially slide either back this way a little bit or this way a little bit, but basically this juncture right here is the start of a 65 day re required review period by the state. And that what kicks that off is your, again, as a group coming together and verifying that you feel that the plan substance is substantially in place and it's ready for that review. Um, we can be working on non-substantive things over the summer with you like fine tuning uh, images, infographics, maps, things like that. But the text itself, as well as the most important piece, the vision, the goals, well, the vision, the theme, the goals, the strategies, and the actions, they would stay uh, in place throughout the 65 day review period. Um, but again, what would kick that off is after you concur with that it's ready, uh, that day that you would send then the that plan to the uh, town council, um, as well as West Cog. Could you review for the subcommittee exactly what the uh, town council needs to do as well as West Cog in order to get the plan done? Sure, the state is a little bit flexible with that. They, they just say that the Planning and Zoning Commission has to give a 65 day review period. And by uh, starting that review period by sending those plans to those two entities, um, that starts their required review. The state has three different options that says that the town council, or in some cases, it's the board of selectmen, um, they have they can they can do nothing. They can hold their own public hearing, but they have to do it within that 65 days if they want to report back to you. Um, uh, or they could uh, just decide to send you comments if they don't have a, their own public hearing. And so, but they have to do that by 65 days. If they don't respond within 65 days, you can still proceed at that point with adopting. And there is different tech, uh, different um, options for you. Like if, for instance, if you get a negative um, uh, uh, recommendation from the town council, there's options for you to make adjustments or to do nothing. But if you do nothing, you have to approve it by a super majority. Um, but we can also discuss those I, action, you know, those possibilities if they should develop. But it's important to note that during that 65 day period, your only responsibility is to send it to them and that they do their own process and they decide what that process is. Um, and then after the 65 days, hopefully they have responded to you but if not, you can proceed. Um, and then West Cog will be, they will be very timely because most of the COGS are in getting back with you. And they're pr primarily looking at whether it's consistent with their plan. And we do have a consistency chapter, so we make it fairly easy for their review um, because we've kind of given them uh, those points. Um, but sometimes they will have some recommendations. I've never seen a, a COG um, unless it was a very rogue plan, uh, reject it. Um, but they might have a couple of suggestions, which again, you can consider along with other um, suggestions that maybe come from the public as well as the town council when you go into your formal public hearing process at the end of, um, after the end of the 65 day review period. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and obviously that is a complex process and you know, we are here once we get to that stage um, to work with you throughout to make sure that everything's going smoothly and to answer any questions that may came, come up from the various um, referrals um, to keep you posted as to how we're doing. Okay, so let's focus real closely on next steps. And um, so the community open house is obviously coming up next. And um, that's coming up on May 20th. Um, I, Sarah, I understand, has shared that information with you. It's We're going to hold it in the same location that we had the open house back in October. So it's at the Lampham Community Center in the Douglas Room. It's going to be from 6 until 9, and it's going to be very similar to the one that we had back in October, where people can attend um, at anywhere during that window of opportunity. 
Um, they can come for 15 minutes or they can stay for the full time if they'd like to chat and participate uh, in, in a lot of depth. We plan on having four stations, one station for each one of the theme areas, and that at each station, there will be a, a board containing the goals and strategies for people to be able to review. Um, and we usually have a sticker uh, activity associated with that where people can um, you know, highlight the goals or the strategies that they're very you know, in favor of. So that way it will also help gauge for you all to determine whether a strategy or and its associated actions should be of high priority because a lot of people are really supporting that um, particular uh, priority. In addition, there will be a second activity at each one of the stations where we will share the uh, draft um, actions and policies that have been um, developed for consideration under each one of the theme, um, each one of the theme areas and the, the goals and strategies. Um, but people can review them. It'll be a handout that they can look at and review, uh, take a few minutes to review it. And then on the activity board, they can uh, use a sticky note and they can either um, supply an additional action or policy they'd like for us all to consider, or they could potentially con uh, confirm that they really like a particular action or policy. Um, we also hope that just like last time that at these particular activities, there will be conversations that will be ongoing. We'll be able to clarify, um, you know, a policy and an action um, and time frame, um, uh, and help folks, you know, explore their ideas further. We also see it as an opportunity for the planning and zoning commissioners to share their ideas and have attendee discussions on the, those ideas. Um, and what we're hoping is that, you know, since you will be getting um, uh, the um, our draft policies and actions no later than the 17th. But we're hoping that between now and then, as maybe a homework assignment that you guys start thinking, if you haven't already, you know, what are your focused areas? Which one of these theme areas do you have real passion about? And do you have you already thought of some policies and action direction? Um, we may end up having some synergy between what we've already developed and what your ideas are. But if not, um, um, obviously on the night of the 20th, it'll be an opportunity for you to also share those ideas. But we will be giving you, um, and Sarah will, will help coordinate this, we will give you um, at least until the end of that week. Um, you know, so you will have had a whole week. Um, and if you need more time, we can certainly expand that, but at a minimum a week for you to like take a close look at the actions and policies and in a, in um, beyond even the 20th, you can share back edits and comments and suggestions to us for us to incorporate into the final um, draft policies and actions that would be moving forward in the plan. Um, also in talking with Sarah today uh, and with talking internally at, at, with the town administration is that we're also thinking of having, uh, for anybody that may not be able to attend the 20th, we do wanna have like a post uh, open house activity um, on the uh, story map where we'll probably ask uh, questions related to each one of the theme areas and just uh, give people the opportunity to add some comments or um, actions or policies that they might be thinking about. And then we'll collect them as well um, throughout the end of May to uh, for consideration. Um, just to talk about the final plan again, um, I know that when we talked about getting you that in more like complete format in the in mid June and then giving you till end June, it may sound like a major undertaking that you have to review. Wow, this whole plan in like two weeks. But I just want to remind you that um, you know these are the chapters that we've talked about before. There are six main chapters as well as the appendices, but. Chapter two will already, which is a very significant tap chapter, will has already been reviewed and is been, you know, will be in pretty good shape. So there shouldn't be too many surprises in that when you see the final plan. It'll just be in a little bit more of an illustrative format. The community vision also, obviously, you all have vetted and looked at. Uh, we can still make some tweaks, but you're very familiar with that. Um, there will be a paragraph or two in addition uh, in that chapter that kind of uh, indicates uh, how the vision came about. Um, and then of course the theme chapter 
We'll also, you're familiar with the themes already, and then we'll have already reviewed the goals and strategies, and we'll be well versed with the policies and actions. Um, so we should be in pretty good shape for final concurrence um, at that time on those type of things. Um, so really the main new things that we'll, you'll be reviewing um, and will uh, will be the future land use plan, uh, which we can probably at the June meeting, we can introduce to you um, and uh, you know have discussions about that and get your input on that as we finalize it through the end of June. And then the consistency chapter, I think will probably be pretty straightforward. Um, you'll, you'll see how we have identified the state and regional plan objectives and then we're tying them uh, to the various goals and strategies that you have um, suggested so that they can see the, um, the uh, consistency. And then in the summertime, while the uh, primary uh, six chapters of the plan are being reviewed, uh, we will be working with you to develop the implementation table by taking those policies and actions that you have um, uh, you know, uh, signaled as your final uh, directives. And then, you know, we'll be working with Sarah to get the entities um, timeframes kind of inserted into theirs for, for review over the summer. Okay, so that's, um, that's the conclusion of my presentation. Um, you know, we're glad to have more conversations and to double back and, um, you know, find out any question, you know, what your questions are or uh, additional ideas that you may have for the open house. Um, but we really want to make sure that you're, you know, well prepared for your review of the action steps um, and policies um, ready for the May 20th open house um, and ready uh, in June to really uh, take a really close look at the draft plan. So we're ready Robert, for conversation. Commissioners, please, if you have questions, please pose them. I have, I have just maybe, and I apologize if I've missed the theme on this, but in our last POCD subcommittee meeting, I thought one of our one of our thought processes was we're really looking forward to this rubber hits the road of having these macro vision and goals start intersecting with the roundtables of the commission leaders, whether it be the Conservation Commission, the uh, Parks and Rec, the you know Utilities Commission, the Town Council, and I recall in that conversation that there was some trepidation and interest in how those meetings would proceed in April, as to whether those goals would intersect with you know specific um, tasks and specific priorities that those individual commissions had, and cause some conflict and some debate and i understood from sarah that that all of those meetings happened in april and i was just curious i mean i'm just sort of shocked candidly that there aren't more notes as to how those meetings went and where those conflicts were because i would i mean the open house i recall the open house as being great in terms of bringing broad awareness to the project but Honestly, it, it tended to be very short conversations without a lot of, you know, let's call it expert debate. And I was concerned that we would be missing those things if we didn't have, um, you know, those commission leaders from conservation, utilities, et cetera, engaged in a, a fairly su substantive debate. So I was curious, Robert, if you could just kind of give us a little perspective on how those roundtables proceeded and what if any conflicts were had and how we can harvest the information that was discussed in those? Um, sure. Correct I me mean, if I didn't understand you know, that. When did, you, when did you join the meeting? Because we had a very robust conversation on oh, that okay. at the beginning, which is no problem, but I didn't. Um, I, joined, I, can... I joined, I guess, 10 minutes in, so I guess I missed the first 10 minutes. I, I didn't realize that that was, I would have thought that would have taken a two hours, honestly, um, <laughs> to discuss how that, how those roundtables went, because I've had multiple emails from conservation, multiple emails from utilities as to making sure this is in or this is out and that sort of thing. So I just didn't see that documented anywhere. 
Sure, I was going to possibly share my screen again, and I'll go back in the presentation. Let me. Uh, I'm, sorry. I'm, ha I'm happy to watch the recording. I, if 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 everyone feels that that was covered sufficiently, I, I I hate to have things record. I just was delayed from work, so I joined ten minutes late. I want to share my screen again, and um, I think I'm sorry. I got a little discombobulated there. So, uh, can you all? Are you all seeing my screen again? Yep. And then, um, sorry, I need to. So I can just jump in quickly, Chris. Um, we had, I think, 12 or 13 meetings on April 23rd, I think it was, um, with all these different stakeholders. And we presented the goals and strategies to them ahead of time so they could provide comments and kind of link it to um, initiatives going on with the commissions and their and the departments and you know bring up any issues they found with it and we received really positive consensus and feedback um, most of what we got um, from them were action steps we didn't really I don't think there was a single goal or strategy where we were told oh you need to change this because it conflicts with x y and z we we really only got positive feedback or suggestions for actions Okay, great. Oh, that's that's really encouraging. Um, so is that all on the POCD update page then? All those notes and things on the on the meetings or I'm so happy we we haven't finished um myself or SLR hasn't finished finalizing our notes with that because we have to go through um we're going theme by theme essentially. Um and we're still working on that to finish the action steps. Okay. Yeah, and I just to give you also a little bit more information of like what we talked about in the beginning is that um uh, Commissioner uh, Chris actually started by asking us, um, you know, how those meetings went. And, you know, my first reaction, and we kind of chimed in, is that they were very positive. They went very well. Um, uh, you know, we met with police and fire, a couple of different commissions, um, uh, public works, a town engineer, uh, parks um, and rec. And um, we really were able to extract, um, they came prepared. They were supportive of the um, goals and strategies that uh, we had outlined with you. Um, and then, you know, even also backing up even a little bit further, as you know, when we last talked back in May, uh, late March, you know, we had presented with you the uh, uh, draft goals and strategies. We ended up getting your edits um, and suggestions. We made those and then we made those uh, edited versions that now Sarah has shared back with you, we made them available to all the folks that were in the greater um, uh, coordination effort that Sarah had, because there were, even though we had 12 meetings on that uh, day in late April, Sarah also had a couple of follow-up conversations with a couple of other groups um, and entities um, and then has shared those information. And she, you know, she's kind of bringing that perspective to the table while uh, we're bringing you know, our ideas uh, from our subject matter experts, everything from, um, you know, the planning staffs on the team expertise and zoning um, and long range planning to, uh, you know, part, uh, walkability and mobility um, to economic development, uh, to downtown improvements uh, and then climate resilience and sustainability. So after the round table meetings, uh, uh, we worked internally to then carry those ideas and suggestions that had come out of those um, roundtable meetings with our subject matter experts. And then right now we're working and it's ongoing, we're working directly with Sarah to kind of uh, uh, synthesize everything that we heard from all of these various meetings that we've had throughout the month of April and even into early May, so that we're crafting draft actions and policies uh, that are falling under each one of the strategies um, uh, goals and strategies that you all reviewed. Um, so we have a really good, uh, robust, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, um, actions and policies for you to consider. We're going to be continuing that synthesis, um, synthesizing with Sarah over the next week. And then by no later than Friday the 17th, we're going to be sending you that um, uh, 
you know, a, a document that's going to include all the goals and strategies as well as action and policies for you to review in detail um, and for your consideration um, uh, as we get past uh, May 17th. Of course, on Monday the 20th, we're then going to be talking to the public um, about getting their concurrence with obviously the goals and strategies that you all have vetted very carefully, but then also start to share the initial ideas for actions and policies that have come out of these detailed meetings that we've had um, in the month of April uh, for them to consider, but also to make sure that anybody from the public, which could also include other commissions and um, uh, uh, community organizations, for them to come and um, concur or to add to any of those um, goals and strategies and also to add to our idea table that well, we're the, developing for yeah. actions and policies. Um, okay. You all they, will also the, have additional week to look at them as, as well. Yep. Yeah. Um, for the 20th, is it going to be a scenario like we had last time where there are going to be tables or is it going to be yes. a presentation of those well, there will be there will, will will be an informal. It's going to be like the last one. There's going to be four stations that are going to be set up in the Douglas room. There's yeah. going to be uh, one station for each one of the theme areas, and each theme area is going to have boards that are going to have the goals and strategies where they stand now. People will be able to read them, and then they'll be able to concur or suggest um, uh, possible um, changes if if needed. Um, and then we will have an open activity where people then can put down action steps or policies that they would like for the Planning and Zoning Commission to consider for those particular goals and strategies. We will also have a handout, which can maybe be in an informal presentation to each uh, attendee that might attend that station where we can kind of review those draft actions and policies that have been developed by those conversations that were had in the month of um, April. Um, the open house is also as an opportunity for you, if you, uh, you know, as I had said before about your homework assignment, if you haven't already been doing this, is, you know, which one of these theme areas or theme area are you, are you most passionate about? And what ideas um, for actions and policies are you wanting to bring forward for consideration? Hopefully, when you see the list of um, uh, actions and policies that have been synthesized internally by um, the town and town staff and us um, that you'll get on the 17th. Hopefully a lot of our ideas will be, um, you know, congruent with your thinking. Um, but we're hopeful that a lot of uh, new ideas and additional ideas will also flow out. Um, you can add those at the 20th or uh, we are with Sarah's help. We're going to hold open your review of those actions and policies uh, for another week or so after the uh, after you receive them, so that you can sm submit back um, your actual comments and suggestions to us. The public is also going to have additional opportunities after the 20th to go onto the website to continue to add their ideas um, and pol um, for policies and actions for the, about another week or two after the public hearing. Um, so that we can then consolidate all these thoughts and kind of fine tune them and then put it into the draft plan. Robert, question for you. When I, when you had these sessions internally, and maybe this is for you, Sarah, too, I would imagine those conversations went beyond just reviewing the goals and strategies. Did they start to share actions or things that they're doing or other areas that we should be considering? Like, how far did they go with their comments? And back to um, Chris's comments, like where, are, when will we see those notes? Cause I'd be very interested, even though they say they align on the strategies, I have to believe they shared a bunch of information on, on actions and needs as well. Sure, so just to clarify, these were 15, 10 to 15 minute meetings per person. So they weren't like, they were, they were quick meetings and we got a lot of information out of them, but they weren't, necessarily these incredibly in-depth conversations. So um, I just wanted to make sure that was clear, but we got, so we, we essentially presented them with the goals and strategies. And then we asked them, do you agree? Do you disagree? 
how does this or does it not um, intertwine with the initiatives going on in your department and your goals over the next five to 10 years? So we got a lot of, you know, ideas of what they hope to see as relates specifically to the goals and strategies. They didn't, I don't think there was a lot of straying from that just because they were such quick meetings and because they had a document to focus on. They were, you know, in the meeting, a lot of them were literally looking at the sheet of paper in front of them and then going, oh, well, this relates to, you know, the fire department wants a second firehouse as an example. That was a big one that um, came up. So I don't know if um, Robert has anything about if there were plans to have formal notes specifically from the roundtables, but my understanding was that, you know, I we all took a lot of notes during that meeting and all the feedback we, we received from those meetings was going to be specifically reflected in the action steps that come to you then that it wasn't necessarily going to be this report that said, this is what we heard from the first selectman at this meeting. This is what we heard from the fire department at this meeting, but um, Robert or Julia or Taylor may be able to provide more color. Yeah, I mean, that's usually what we do is like the, you'll see, you'll see that all their ideas that we got from them show up in the action steps and policies. Um, of course, when you're reviewing them, if you have comments like, you know, if you're uncomfortable with an action step, although I, I, I would be surprised because I feel like we had a lot of synergy with them. Um, there wasn't, I don't think there was a single meeting that we had where anybody said, you know, that's not congruent with my thinking or my department's thinking. I mean, I think we, that was one of the things we were so impressed about is that people were, um, you know, open to a lot of new ideas and new directives. Um, you know, like for instance, with the public works, um, you know, uh, there's a lot of growing interest in, uh, complete streets, like developing a complete streets policy and, you know, and eventually implementing it and getting grants for sidewalks and completing a sidewalk plan. Um, so I think you're going to, I think you might be surprised by the synergy that we're going to be showing you with the uh, actions and policies. Yeah, and most people showed up with, you know, very prepared, that's what the difference of, you know, projects that they're you know, their priorities, their projects that they're working on, um, grants they would like to go out with. Um, we got a lot of additional just information about, like, for example, from the police department, from the fire department, about like the types of development that um, works well for them or areas of town where, um, you know, they could improve their service provision, things like that. Um, people came very, very prepared. So we so we did we did get a lot of information um, and they, they'll be, you know, synthesizing action steps. Okay, thank you. Um, I would suggest perhaps to uh, Sarah, um, as we move towards the uh, May 20 um, meeting and, you know, the finalization soon after that, or not finalization, but a, a solid draft of the next steps in the document, um, perhaps reminding the people we met in April that the uh, door is open and we continue to eagerly receive any ideas they have on what we've written, as well as some of the uh, things we haven't written yet, such as the goals, strategies, and policies. And the, the door is still open. And if something occurs to you now, we want to hear it. And I know everyone on the subcommittee has a his or her own list of uh, goals, strategies, and actions. Um, and, you know, please uh, share those with Sarah, who will then be a point person for distribution to others. And uh, Commissioner Herring, you mentioned some emails you've received. I would encourage you to share those with Sarah so that uh, she can benefit from that. And again, she's the point person to be sure that all these good ideas are are being received and are being uh, properly reviewed by SLR as well as the entire, uh, the, the entire subcommittee. So, Door still open. We want to remind everyone. Um, also, um, uh, Sarah and I are going to be working on a uh, probably a press release and some other uh, PR to continue to inform the town that this will be an important public meeting. Their participation is more than welcome, and to uh, uh, direct them towards some of the information on the website as well as the agenda, so that they can uh, be as prepared as possible to so that we can benefit from their wisdom. So those are other things that are sort of on the to-do list. 
I just also want to quickly add that, you know, as you know, we've just thrown a lot of information at you all that, you know, May 20th is really the first, you know, bite at the apple for you all, the public and even town staff of, okay, this is what we've been hearing for months from all of you. This is, this is what, you know, we've heard. Did we miss anything? Did you think of something else? So it's, this isn't the, you know, this may be the last community workshop, but this isn't the final time that anyone, whether it's you, the public, or other stakeholders in town have to, you know, speak about the plan. Or to give ideas. I was going to share a couple of goals I, or goals, but, uh, oh, goals I have, uh, not in particular uh, um, uh, order. One is perhaps re review tree removal uh, policies on new developments and how many you can cut down. You can't just, you know, cut them all down and whether some should be maybe replaced if they're sort of approaching the, the end of their useful life or their, their lives, maybe it's better to replace them. Um, Commissioner Herring brought up the issue of reviewing um, pervious surface coverage issues, which I would encourage uh, for the entire commission. Um, purchasing composters at the um, uh, transfer station so that we can own the entire process for composting, not only town compostables, but also that of the schools and maybe other uh, institutions, uh, perhaps charging them a fee, um, reviewing uh, apartment rules for downtown. I think there's still one bedroom with some of the rule, um, maybe reviewing that. Um, potential limits of sewer expansion so that we can, you know, husband our resources so that our capacity is available for what will probably be more intense development within the uh, sewer area. These are just a few ideas I'm kicking around, and I encourage you to send them all to Sarah so that we can get this preferably as many as we can before the 20th, so it'll be as, as rich a conversation as we can. Hey, Sarah, on the uh, sewer side, is there um, EPW and the WPCA, are they still doing that um, town-wide analysis and survey of sewer capacities? Yeah, so they received some um, update to the plan, I wanna say like six to nine months ago, and that was forwarded to SLR um, with the capacity, but they are still in the process of doing um, a few other studies. Um, so yeah, that's still going on. So will that study or some some interpretation of that study be in the POCD? It will definitely be referenced, um, but, you know, depending on where they're at with um, what stage of the, their plan that they're at, you know, it kind of impacts how much it will be referenced in our plan or not. Okay. Yeah, we should um, pay, pay close attention to that. That's a very toxic little topic. Yeah, I'd like to add that we'll just um, just for some other guidance there is that it will be um, plans and initiatives from the town that are ongoing or maybe regional plans as well. Those will be um, both or can be addressed in the text of the theme chapters where we're analyzing the con conditions of each, um, you know, the facilities and infrastructure of related to that theme. Um, but we can also provide linkages in the action steps itself. So, for example, um, Maybe the capacity analysis isn't uh, completed by the time that our plan is moving forward, but we'll set we will have something in there saying ensure that uh, sewer expansion is aligned with the capacity that's allowed per the results of you know X, Y, and Z yeah. study. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. That way, it's ongoing, it's living. If it gets amended in the next ten years, you're still encouraging the um, compliance with those types of reports and plans. Yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff happening in Hartford in terms of Hartford pushing for local jurisdictions to pay for uh, sewer expansion on larger developments, which they shouldn't have to. So I um, want to be careful about how we frame that whole chapter. Definitely. Sarah, did you, um, I just had a follow-up question before that may be helpful. Did um and I, maybe you did this already, but did you forward um, everybody, all the subcommittee members, the list of who we spoke with? Um, and if not, maybe that might be helpful. Maybe we can help craft like just that instead of having like the notes, but we can they can see who we talked to, so they can be anticipating, you know, what we might have heard from them. And then yeah, I can't remember off the top of my head if I sent everyone a status update. It would have been the 
day before or after those meetings, I'll I'll check my sent folder. Um, but if not, I'll forward you what was sent to them. It might be good. And and again, we're, you know, as you start to review them, we're open for conversations if you're curious as to where an action came from. Um, you know, or a policy, uh, and we we have our notes, and we can you know share that with you. And then ultimately, you all are the decision makers. So, if there's a policy or an action that we forwarded up, you know, from the fire department, and you're not comfortable with it, it doesn't have to appear in the plan if that's the consensus of the um, planning and zoning commission. Um, I also there was one other thing I wanted to mention too is that in developing the all the action steps we did, you know, we have gone through the existing plan and in our part of our process that we've had over the last month in developing them is that we did move a lot of um, existing actions and policies from the, the current plan forward. Um, there's some that are gonna be appearing exactly as they are because they're still very relevant. Others were modifying um, as appropriate. Um, and then some, we talked with Sarah and she confirmed whether it was completed or no longer a priority. Um, but, you know, make, you know, we're open too for conversations once you start reviewing them. If you have a policy from the existing plan that you're not seeing in the latest plan that you wanna make sure is moved forward, we can have a conversation about that through your, you know, your edits by what happened at this policy and I'd like to see it in the new plan. Um, we're, you know, those are the kind of conversations we would be expecting to have um, if we're not all on the same page. Can I ask a, two, two broad topics, Robert? Because um, I'm not honestly sure which part of the plan they might fall under. Um, actually, three key ones. One was the concept of just, um, you know, indexing the town's assets in a, in a staged way. Um, like in a stack ranked way. I think I've brought this up numerous times, but I'm not exactly sure where it lies because we often get in the middle of debating economic development versus historical preservation. And, you know, in England, I think they have, you know, level one listed, level two listed, level three listed, depending on whether, you know, perhaps someone royal slept there or they haven't slept there, or I don't know what their, you know, their ranking is across those buildings. And then likewise, I think we've we've talked about the same sort of thing with land. So i.e., you know, native wetland versus untouched forest versus, you know, greenfield or or brownfield. Um are those sort of indexes of, of the way the town looks at its assets and establishes a rank or a sub you know, objective measure, because often we're put in a position of saying, hey, we want to build this stadium on parkland because it increases the amenities of the town. But if it's, you know, raw wetlands, maybe that's a, a you know, a difficult one. But if it's, you know, brownfield, maybe it's a great idea. So I, I just was curious, where would that sort of indexing and sort of data dictionary lie within this type of plan? Well, um, obviously that might be something that we have to discuss in more detail. And right off the top, like some kind of index like that, I would imagine in this plan, you know, you would probably want to study that further, develop it in a more comprehensive way. So it might just be um, an action step or a policy to pursue, um, but the subjects that you're talking about, while there may not be an index or a ranking, there are they are showing up as policies. And when you, uh, and you've been doing this in the past, when you get a development application, and as the Planning and Zoning Commission are reviewing it, you have to uh, look at the POCD to find it to be con um, consistent with the POCD. And so yeah. the policies that we're hopefully lining out with you will give you those consistency things that you would be looking for, you know? So we, we have been, you know, in developing those policies, we have been working with Sarah, you know, on some of the ones, as a matter of fact, earlier today, we talked about some of the ones related to historic preservation. Um, you know, there are gonna be some policies about that that you, you all will want to, um, you know, concur with. Um, same thing is gonna be in the environmental, you know, in theme three, 
uh, where we talk a little bit more about sustainability and resilience, there's going to be some policies in there about um, the direction that um, that you all uh, and the town would like to, uh, you know, move forward. Um, so some of those things will be in there. Uh, as far as like a really detailed indexing, like, you know, you get an application and you have like a, a ranking uh, um, um, process to, to figure out where it falls. Um, you know, that probably would have, if you want to pursue something like that, that might have to be like an action step that, because you would have to do that like in a more comprehensive study to figure out what that ranking would be. Okay. Well, well thanks, Robert. Uh, no, it's good to hear that some of those topics have already been broached, but I, I wasn't sure where that would fit within the, sounds like it might fit in a couple of different places in the plan in terms of that idea of a framework for yeah. making. So. I mean, I think the policies, that's why we, you know, we have suggested that there would be in, when you get down into each strategy where there's action steps and policies, that's kind of the reason why we split them apart so that the policies would be very clear that they're guiding, you know, principles underneath that strategy um, and action steps would actually be tasks. Um, so we kind of separated them out, even though all, both of them are very specific um, for each strategy. Um, and, uh, and, you know, Sarah or um, others from my team, if you have other thoughts on that ranking or ideas, um, um, you know, please jump in as well. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead, Taylor. I was just going to say, I think, um, I think there's a balance between the approach of, you know, we can uh, broadly address some rankings, you know, if you have priorities um, about, uh, like very broad consensus concepts versus something like, um, you know, I think about natural resources, I think of a natural resource inventory. Now that's not a part of the entire there. That's not an in-depth part of the uh, uh, POCD. That's That could be a standalone, you know, 50-page uh, document, depending on how deep you want to go. So I think some of our action steps would be guiding you towards that, considering those as follow-up projects to ensure that you have the tools that you need to um, provide all of the the um, decisions and, and you know, guidance that you you would be required to. A uh, question for SLR at the May 20 meeting, which uh, SLR professionals will be joining us? It's going to be uh, myself and Taylor and then also um, Elizabeth uh, that was at the workshop previously. Um, Julia, unfortunately, has a, another commitment, so is not able to be there this time. So uh, yeah, Elizabeth's the uh, climate resiliency expert. So yeah, Elizabeth is also a, um, a town resident. She grew up there, yeah. Yeah. Right, so there'll be three people from SLR at the May 20 event. That's right. Thank you. Commissioners, uh, any further questions for SLR or points to be made, questions, topics, thoughts, please share. So just to clarify, Sarah, are we supposed to get you ideas for action items before the 20th or we're just supposed to bring them with us and share them with you then? So it's um, really up to you and your um, availability or ability to, um, if you can get them to us, probably like if, you, if you're hoping to have them present at like be on the boards at the meetings, we probably need them by like Wednesday of next week. Um, anything later than that, I'd, I would venture SLR doesn't necessarily have the time or the ability to get everything ready for um, the workshop, but um, you can bring stuff to the um, workshop and then it just won't be on the boards or I think we said, you know, within a week after um the workshop you can send stuff to me before we okay. get into draft mode okay yeah remember that if you bring something to the workshop uh, you know when you if you have an idea for an action step you know you'll be able to write it on a post-it note so others that are in attending will be able to see it so it would be able to be it may not be in the handout that would be at the station but it would it could be posted on the board so that people could be reading it and maybe you know, liking it as well.
And hopefully a lot of your ideas will be embedded in some of the ideas that we've already come up with. Yeah, that um, that just made me realize, you know, we, we're drafting a lot of action steps right now. So you may want to wait to send us things to see what we've done first, instead of, you know, taking the time to write things that we may have already um, thought of. Right, because all we have right now is the goals and strategies. We don't have any action steps proposed. Correct, and that's what we're working on and we'll get sent to you all next Friday. Oh, okay. okay. Sarah, yeah. we did talk today about the fact that um, we may have theme area one done early next week. Um, it's in draft format. Um, we could, if, if, if it's desired, we could, you know, you could plan on maybe sending theme area one to everybody by like on Wednesday or something, just so that they can see the detail um, um, and, you know, all, you know, all the different actions and policies that are being proposed or suggested for theme area one. Um, that might give them some uh, ideas for additions and advance um, and or maybe get them thinking along those same lines for the other three theme areas. Yeah, I'm happy to do that if it would be helpful to the subcommittee to instead of sending it out in one email mass as it becomes available, send it to you. Yeah, I'd love to see it as it comes available. Okay, not a problem. Yeah. And I think as we had said, it would be no later than Friday um, the 17th. So, but as the theme areas become um, wrapped up, we could we could send them to you. Commissioners, any final comments, thoughts, uh, questions for SLR? We're certainly uh, looking forward to seeing everyone at the uh, May 20 event. Um, and please uh, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, uh, we certainly want a robust turnout. So uh, thank you. And if there are no more uh, points from members of the commission or comments from SLR, uh, why don't we move on to the next uh, item on the agenda? That's agreed. One, one final question, will the 20th be recorded? No, um, just with the way the meeting's going to be set up, we would just be recording a mass of people talking, so it just doesn't make yep. sense. Okay. The um, look information the about the boards that we can have that um, we can post the boards on the on the website. Okay. And again, for those of you um, that are going to be attending the workshop, similar to last time, you'll likely be picking a theme to stick with for the whole evening. Um, and then either myself or an SLR staff member will be with you at that station. Um, we can, in theory, have you move around theme to theme if you would like, but it may make the most sense to just have you stick with a theme for the evening. Can I ask, is, is there any, you know, I know you're coming up with these themes, but I imagine that, you know, given you've done these POCTs, you know, for years, and there are some themes that ebb and flow depending on you know the the professional sentiment um as people you know see these experiments play out in different towns and you know do you have you know a list of strategies and and tactics that have been used across pocds and 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 can you highlight you know what strategies have happened in the past um or are kind of budding new strategies that may be a little more bleeding edge um, that you can highlight to us. I, I feel like, you know, being a layman, I, I don't know what is an old idea versus a new idea. And I, I assume you do. Um, so are, are those, when you propose those strategies, I suppose with Sarah, are you going to highlight that this is sort of a, a gimme strategy or something that's sort of table stakes and, and you're going to propose, you're going to say, well, this is kind of a, a pushing the envelope strategy and this is a, a laggard strategy. Is that some sort of flavor that you can add to this? Could you guys- that's a, that's a good point. Yeah. Or, go ahead, Sarah. Could you maybe like in a handout sheet of the action strategies, could you maybe color code? You know, this is- you know, from the 2014 POCD, this is a more modern idea, or this is a tried and true method. 
Are you asking us to do that? Yeah. Or you ask? Oh. Yeah, I think we've already, um, you know, done some color coding, at least of the ones that were from previous, yeah. that, that were already in the previous plan. Um, but I think that's interesting. Maybe we could highlight the ones that are like maybe cut, like more, we think are creative, cutting edge, newer ideas for your consideration, at least. You know, we'll have the ones that are from your previous plan, ones that are fairly standard, and then ones that are maybe like, asterisks of like, we think this is a really good good idea or new idea or like, you, you know, pretty unique. Yeah, yeah I think you're, or go ahead, Taylor. I was just gonna say, Julia, I think that's a good idea. Um, I would probably say that we would provide that level of detail for you all for your review, but publicly for the open house, we would simplify that and just have everything look, looking the same. Um, but for your the purposes of your review, I think that would actually be pretty beneficial to know where they came from, know uh, um, if it's you know newer, more progressive, or whatnot. Yeah, just uh, my observations are. I mean, obviously, I think that's a good question, but um, you know, I think you know, as a professional planner, you know, we're pulling from many different I ideas and sources to uniquely come up with solutions and actions for you. Um, you know, and, and it's coming from many different avenues. I mean, because again, we did have some from your existing plan to consider. We had these conversations with other town departments and, and um, uh, um, uh, commissions. Uh, we had conversations with other subject matter experts um, and then, in crafting them with Sarah, you know, we're synthesized. Oh, and then we do have, you know, uh, we do have databases that we keep of all the various different goals, strategies, and action steps that we have used in BOCDs uh, universally to kind of have as a, as a base point. But, you know, every town is unique and every town's um, desires for where they may want to go or how progressive or not progressive they want to be. And, and we take that all in consideration, especially with our in-depth conversations that we're having with Sarah. Um, so, um, you know, obviously on any particular one, we're happy to discuss it with you, but I think we're, we're pulling from a wide range of um, places to kind of come up with the best for what we've heard in New Canaan. Um, but I would say that it is probably the most robust, um, you know, uh, your you know plan that we're working on with you because of the openness of the community to consider a lot of new uh, planning trends and ideals um, that in some cases in some other communities they're not ready or there yet. So you are trending on the very um, progressive side with those ideas. Well, I also want to be realistic. I mean, because, you know, take, for example, the notion of, you know, putting tree islands in parking lots, you know, like we just are repaving our parking lots, you know, we just got that approved, but we're actually not repaving them with traffic islands and trees because, you know, apparently we don't want to do that. And so it's like, you know, clearly that was a good idea that that kind of went a step too far because we're not actually able to do it ourselves as a as a town. So I guess I, I don't want to I, you know, I, I don't want to get too accurate. Like it'd be helpful for you to point out what are sort of more aspirational strategies and what are sort of baseline strategies, um, because right. I, I want to test. I mean. I just want to put something like I want to my my own due diligence would say I, I'd want to test it with the Department of Public Works or the 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 Board of Selectmen to say, you know, is it crazy to say that, you know, lighting should be dark sky or is it crazy to say that, you know, we you know, pick a pick a thing, but um, that we should have ten percent sewer extra extra sewer capacity. Um, I don't know what what the the metric would be, but. I don't think we're proposing anything that's not something that has been talked about from town staff's perspective or our knowledge of, of the community. 
So I would say that we don't have anything that's too aspirational. That's not because we do want the plan to be something that can be implemented. So I think that's part of the balancing that's, that's act. That's super disappointing. What you just said was that everything that you've come up with, every idea that you've come up with has come up from our town. Appropriate for your town so that it's implemented. No, no, but what you said was every idea that you've come up with has been something that you've heard from our town. I, I, I guess what I'm saying is that I keep on harping on this is that like your experts, we, we, we paid you to come up with creative and innovative ideas. And so I just want to make sure that you're not, you know, you know, creating an echo chamber for us to hear our own ideas without bringing new ideas in. I think, it, I mean, the only thing I can say is just take a look at the actions and policies when you get them. Um, Cause I, I don't know if I can be any more specific than we are like with the process that we're doing. So, you know, just hopefully you will um, get a better sense once you start looking at the policies and action steps so that you can kind of see the framework that they're coming from. Um, yeah, but and, it's, and yeah, I'm sorry, Chris, uh, earlier we did talk about um, how we've had, in addition to those roundtable meetings with the town staff, we had meetings with subject matter experts specifically on, you know, transportation, climate resiliency, economic development. Um, and I think Robert was more saying we're like, nothing was out of, con seemed out of concurrence with what we heard from the town staff as well. Like, we're bringing new like creative innovative ideas but they're aligned with the priorities that we've heard okay no thank you yeah mm -hmm. yeah thanks for clarifying but i think you'll see that once you get it take a look at them and then that's why we're sharing them with you too and that's why we want your ideas to come forward too and if you have an idea and you don't know how to frame it into an action step that's what we'll be we can talk with you about on the 20th or afterwards um, we're here to make sure that if we haven't hit the, all the points that you want to hit, that we make sure that we find a way to do that. I, I would hope that many of the uh, goals and strategies would be challenging uh, and perhaps time consuming to achieve because sometimes gestation periods are long for these. I, I don't want, I would, I would be disappointed if there were quite a few, let's call them Hail Marys, where you know, that's just not going to happen. For any number of reasons, because it sort of diminishes the the report is in and of itself, but uh, innovative, creative, and doable, perhaps doable with effort, uh, and doable with some creativity and uh, and planning, but 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 doable, um, I, I, something challenging, uh, but uh, possible, is uh, I think would be nice. There'll be a few layups in there, no doubt. That's fine, but don't want them all layups. <laughs> Be here, yeah. So, commissioners, any further comments or questions for our friends at SLR or ideas, thoughts on this topic? I'll, I'll take that as a no. Um, why don't we uh, then excuse our uh, our, our uh, colleagues at SLR? And we can move on to the uh, other items on our agenda. Not too much left, but a couple items we need to deal with. And hope to see everyone on the 20th. Thank Great. you. Everyone. Thank you. It's nice Thank seeing you. you all tonight. And we look forward as well to see you on the 20th. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda, any other business that may come before the uh, subcommittee any topics people would like to review i have one uh, factoid to share the uh uh photography contest is <laughs> ended in the beginning of, of may and we had i think well over 100 submissions sarah yes and um sarah has told me that uh many of the submissions are, are really very very good and um, would probably uh, fit well into uh, into the POCD as well as other town media. So that seems to be going well. But um, so that uh, that has happened. Um, uh, any other points, though? Except uh, see you on the twentieth, and please share your uh, policy goal, your policies, goals, and strategies with uh, with Sarah, so that they can be uh, included in our thinking.
and uh, she will be the again the the funnel to be sure we don't have one of those they went that away situations with these uh, always okay. always something to be avoided. I just want to jump in. Um, yes, thank you. I know we're throwing around a lot of buzzwords, so I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. So last meeting, you all shared feedback, and then the week after, you gave me feedback on the goals and strategies document. So those have been given consensus for now while we make action steps. So that final document for now was sent to you by Lola um, with the agenda for this meeting. So you were sent a copy of that. And so basically there's a goal and then there are like four, two or three or four strategies underneath each goal. And we are currently writing policy steps and action steps for each strategy. So that's what you will be getting eventually. So it's basically, we have a goal, there are strategies, and then we have actions for each strategy. If I may, I had um, one or two thoughts to share on some of the strategies when I've reviewed this and, and when it's new ideas. On, on strategy 1.3.3, it says support efforts to promote walkability within the downtown. I would suggest that we may want to enter, add at the end to the debt within the downtown area and to public schools. Uh, one of the points that was made is to make additional walkability to the schools a, uh, as easy as possible, including e-school was mentioned, I think, specifically. And was so, that language that you already shared with me um, when when you sent your comments for the document, just because for right now, like the actual oh, okay. page of the goals and strategies, we have to keep the same while we- Okay, fair enough. Public for the action I'll stuff. email them to you. Okay. But um, again, uh, final thoughts on this, as well as goals and strategies, we need those soon. Any other any other matters uh, commissioners want to bring up? Okay. Uh, point three, approval of the minutes. They have been sent to everyone. Does anyone have any comments on the minutes? Changes? No. no. Do I hear a motion? No. no. Going, sorry, going back to your comment, Sarah. So if if if, for example, we hear these strategies next week or whenever they come out and we think they're flawed in some way because the goal was improperly inclusive, for example, in John's comment, are you saying that we can't go back and edit the goal? No, you can. It's just right now, ahead of the public hearing, we're presenting them our current draft of the goals and strategies. So we just we got to pick one thing right now to edit. Yeah. OK, fair enough. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure I understood the, the flexibility we had there. Thank you. I'm reminded, uh, Commissioner Herring, of the comment you made is that um, will we have a chance to take another bite of the apple on these? And I think we will. Um, uh, I think what we have now is something that uh, is, is a very good rough draft, uh, inevitably, as we move forward and, and benefit from the wisdom of the people of New Canaan in this coming meeting, as well as other other interactions. We may want to tweak it, but I think it's it's pretty well baked. But you know, there's always room for improvement. And so if you have ideas, Commissioner, or any Commissioner, please share them with Sarah. I'm going to go back to the agenda, <laughs> to, yeah. to the, uh, to the uh, minutes, if I may. Um, do I hear a motion on the minutes from the meeting of March 20? Do you have a motion? Someone? Motion. Motion to approve. Okay, motion to approve from uh, Commissioner Benton. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Commissioner Nielsen, a second. Any further comments on it? Okay, all those in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. Raise your hand. Aye. 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 Okay, it's unanimous. Thank you. And um, that's all. See you on the 20th, and please uh, share information with Sarah. Thanks, everyone. Thank okay. you, John. Thank Bye you. Guys.